So like yeah. in one of your videos, you said yeah. that full stack development is a myth. So I want to understand why you said that, like where you're coming from. If you could elaborate a little bit on that for and, and before you do so, let me tell you, I was actually hurt <laughs> when I saw that video because I used to call myself a full stack developer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yes, and uh, why I asked you this was because our first job, the job title itself was full stack developer yeah. in a yeah. home automation company. So yes, oh. very curious. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and to be very clear, I've had that job title as well. And um, I just think it's a misnomer, right? It, I think it leads people to believe it's something when, it, when it's not. Um, but I, look, I have no problem with full stack devs. I just think that um, w the industry kind of bottles people into a specific category like that. And it makes them seem like they're way more qualified than they really are. Um, and so the, to be, I think it, th there's that side, but also the side of like generalization and specialization, right? Like the ideal team that I want to build a product has a collection of generalists, not, or sorry, a collection of, of specialists, not just generalists. I think generalists are good, but I think manage, uh, engineering managers are better suited to be a generalist. Um, but I think back end devs, they really need to specialize in some things. And it, I, given it, it, it depends on what you're doing. Like if you're launching a startup or something, you may lead into more full stack. But if you have an established product that, um, and you're solving some pretty complicated problems, I'd say that you'd want people that are highly focused in a particular domain, um, or at least interested in a particular domain. So on my team, I've had, um, you know, several people that are just like, very interested in Postgres design or, you know, SQL relational database design. And so they put a lot of thought in our, you know, persistence layer, which is really important. And then we have other people that only want to touch the front end and they're super great at anything front end and they know all of the new state management trends and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'd say like a front end dev, if they're full stack, their attention is, is split, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say a healthy team is a, a, a collection of, you know, a couple generalists and um, more specialists. Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a scrum master, just want to add this. I understand where you're coming from because like uh, a very important uh, phenomena or I'll say like a principle in scrum is to form a T-shaped team. Right. Yeah. And by a T-shaped mm -hmm. team, we mean that each member of your team would have some generalized skills, which is like horizontal uh, skills, but they also have like these vertical skills. So specialization in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So that fits exactly with what you're saying right now. And also to support what you're saying, let me also share a little bit about like our experience. So we were hired as full stack developers in the home right. automation company, but then we were assigned specific tasks. So okay. I don't know if it happened by chance or was it like very, you know, it was planned because it was not a very big company, but like I was assigned specialization in the back end. So I was assigned back end tasks and Prana was assigned front end tasks in the right. beginning. So we developed our uh, specialization like in different areas. So per se, so for, for example, I developed it in, you know, like back in Node.js databases and AWS and stuff like that and kind of like in the front end. But he was not happy with that, I can tell you, because he wanted to work both in front end as well as in back end. So this uh, brings me to like a follow up question. Sure. So do you think that... Um, being a jack of all trade is like, it wouldn't take you uh, very long. Like it's not good for you as compared to like being a master of one. What do you recommend in general? Well, I think in the beginning, I think uh, specialization is, is not a good idea. Like if you're getting into tech, uh, you don't know what you want to specialize in for one. Um, and secondly, you're in a sea of experts. So it, it's really hard to specialize in something like that when you know, it, computer science and software engineering is daunting enough, right? So, uh, you know, I, I would I would highly recommend that people look into that full stack jack of all trades kind of role when they're starting out. But as they're, you know, as you get your feet wet and get your hands in a bunch of different types of projects, you're going to start getting opinions, and I think those opinions will lead you to your 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 your, your niche, your natural fit, uh, and then you'll specialize in that. 
Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I also think that specialization, uh, specialization is important. And especially if you're working for a bigger company who can afford to have five people in the front end team and five in the back end where you can actually focus on what you like. But yeah. a lot of smaller companies maybe can't afford that who can only hire three developers and they want their whole infrastructure to work. So it just depends uh, on the kind of company. But I do agree with you. The more you have worked, the more experience you have gained, uh, specialization, uh, at least moving towards it is uh, definitely a good thing to do. Totally. And, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd say like your choice in, 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 in company plays a huge role. Um, for people starting out, I would highly recommend, you know, um, doing a big company and a startup to see the delta between them and see how things move. Um, you'll often find that people that go to startups are just super impressed with how quickly things move. Uh, but you'll find people that work at big companies, you know, really appreciative of the fact that they have resources. So it, it's, you know, you can't, sometimes you can't have everything. Um, yeah. but, but I definitely think getting your hands, um, you know, in a bunch of different uh, areas is very important. Yeah. And I remember when uh, Kritika and I both were trying to find our jobs, uh, we, when we used to go to LinkedIn and let's say we find any web developer or software developer role, you start with basic, nice to have, uh, no one of the programming languages, JavaScript, Java, C++, that's the beginning. And then a few soft skills, things like that. And in the end, in the nice to have section, they would write everything. They would be uh, <laughs> obviously basic things like Git, but they would be then AWS, one of the clouds, and uh, maybe you know uh, scripting or backend, sure. or so. So there would be a lot of things, and I think that's why a lot of people went to Udemy and started doing courses where they would learn everything, the holistic view of actually mm -hmm. making a website or a mobile app, connecting it to a server, hosting it somewhere, having a database. So it does give everyone like, uh, and a lot of people are actually afraid of getting into tech because they see so many skills being required as an engineer to just start working. And I yeah. remember my first resume had like 20 skills. In my skill section, I used to write everything. Sure. But now as I've gained more experience four or five years into the this field, I have actually reduced the number of skills yeah. on my resume, focusing on yeah. what I really like. Yeah, no, I, I definitely have removed stuff, especially things I don't ever want to do again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, but yeah, I think that, uh, look, I think engineering is a discipline of people that just need to solve problems. And sometimes the problems aren't straightforward. They don't require, they might not require a code solution. It's just a problem. And so the people that I like on my team are kind of well-rounded in terms of, you know, outside of tech, like they see an issue and they know how to approach it. They know how to take something complicated and break it into pieces. So, um, I, I that might get lost in translation on to the recruiting team, but for, from a hiring manager's perspective, you want specialization if your team can allow for it, but you also want people to, uh, be well-rounded mentally to be able to approach any problem. And I'm not sure you can, like, maybe they just list a bunch of stuff because they don't know how to vet for that. I think there is a problem in hiring. How do you vet for well-roundedness uh, prior to, like, you know, uh, you know, engineering leadership and, and uh, technical conversations? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I'm just curious, have you been involved in interviews? Or, like, do you usually yeah. take a lot of interviews in the last few years? Oh my gosh, I've probably done over 200 interviews um, or more. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I mean, just, just a lot. Years of interviews doing several a day. I can't even count. Um, yeah, that was actually my inspiration for posting videos. <laughs>